Harry's wife, part 77.5. No, not you. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor and welcome to further video analysis of Harry's wife in action. The first piece of footage takes place at some kind of tour or presentation. And I'm going to let you watch the footage first without me saying anything. It's about a minute long. So you can digest that and start to form your own ideas about what's going on. And then I'm going to loop it. And as I do so, you can hear the explanations of what's actually occurring. See if they match with your own ideas and thoughts about what's actually happening. As I give you once again an unrivaled analysis about the behaviour of Harry's wife, the thought processes and reactions to such a situation as this. Coming up, first of all, is the footage itself. So, here we are at the relevant palace, um, and along comes Prince Charles, and he leads the way, and who does he find waiting for him? Oh, look, it's Harry and Harry's wife, guarding the door almost, and Prince Charles is straight over, has a quick look at the floor. Prince Harry gestures, go ahead. It's good of him, thank you very much. And of course, one thing that you know with a narcissist is that invariably a narcissist is a self-inviter with no boundary recognition, a sense of entitlement, no accountability for the behaviour, an absence of emotional empathy for how people are affected by that behaviour. We are access all areas. And here, Harry and Harry's wife have turned up to some kind of viewing or presentation and it's evident that they ought not to be there. And along comes Her Majesty, Camilla in the background. Charles has a quick word. What the fuck are you doing here? Blank look from Harry. And you shouldn't be in here. Piss off. He's explained by his father. Probably more politely saying, look, you ought not to be here. It's senior royals only. And uh, that doesn't include you. And as a consequence, we can see that there is the grin and a hopeful look from Harry's wife as she continues to try and assert control over Charles, but he's having none of it. He turns back and speaks. Queen completely ignores them. No doubt thinking, oh, not those two hangers on again. No acknowledgement. And you'll notice also there's no acknowledgement by Camilla. There's no acknowledgement by William. There's no acknowledgement by Catherine. And that will be as a consequence of wondering what on earth are these two doing here? Who invited them? Of course, self-invited by Harry's wife. And Harry yanked on the leash, you're coming along too, chummy. It's only Charles that interacts with them. And the other four probably think, yep, we'll leave it to Charles to tell them to clear off. And on they go. And you'll notice the Queen say something to Charles, say, perhaps asking, what the dickens were those two doing here? No idea, Mama. You know how it is. Turn up everywhere, those two, they're like a rash all over everything. Oh, look, some ancient historical artefacts. Let's go and have a look. And he points them out. And, of course, at this juncture, what will Harry's wife be feeling? Well, there are one, two, three, four, five non-intimate secondary sources family members. One has issued challenge fuel by at least speaking to her and saying, you shouldn't be here. Therefore, Prince Charles has given fuel. That's not an issue. But he's told her she's not allowed to be here, which offends her sense of control. And the other four have ignored her, which causes wounding. And at that point, the fury will have been ignited. However, the facade manages to keep it under control. And we don't see her suddenly leaping forward, trying to rugby tackle Camilla or saying, don't you know who I am? My name's down, let me in. And instead, she isn't able either to turn to Harry and say anything, perhaps reprimanding him by saying, told you we weren't invited, why on earth did you come along? And of course, it wasn't his idea in the first place, but one can imagine there have been instances of her saying such things. And instead, they skulk around in the background. Harry looks a little bit lost, he's looking around at the doorway, someone help me, get me out of here. Ah, courtier, excellent. My good man, any chance we can get in? Here's a crisp £50 note. Forged it this morning, you know. Look, uh, ignore though, those aren't crayon marks. No, that's the, that's actually a legitimate. Uh, see, look, there's a picture of my grandma, so it's obviously legitimate. How about you take that, my good fellow, and let us in? 
William looks back for an instant, wondering what's going on, and again essentially ignores. He doesn't go over while he's waiting to view the uh, mace that's upon the table. He ignores again Harry's wife while Harry has some kind of conversation. And Harry's wife stands there looking like a fully clothed person at an orgy, not sure where to put herself. Charles and the Queen move on, pointed a couple of items. Yes, mm, very interesting. Yes, yes, seen one of those before. Yes, got that one. Got that one. Swapping that one. Getting that one for Christmas, thinks the Queen. Yep, that's all sorted. And, of course, in the background, we can see after discussion with the courtier, the courtier, he's suggesting that Harry and his wife bugger off. And he leads them to one side. They are not allowed a glimpse of the artefacts on the table. Along come Camilla, William and Catherine having a quick look. Yes, that's all very interesting. Thank you very much. And brilliantly, we then see as the shot pans round that Harry and his wife are being made to wait to allow the monarch and her entourage to pass. And off they go. Humiliation. And now you can go. So in this instance, the duo have turned up clearly uninvited but thinking liggers that they are that they can get in pa charles tells it to them straight you ain't coming in here pal no and certainly not her oh but look i'm holding my clutch bag and looking at you and you should be why is this jedi mind trick not working harry you told me it would do no in everybody comes four people ignore her wounding occurs fury will ignite and of course direct assertion of control not available Indirect assertion of control, no attempt made because she's not actually conversing with anybody. It's Harry that's trying to work things out. The attempt at passing off the £50 note that he crayoned earlier fails and they're led to one side. You need to be out of here, thank you very much. But you can't walk in front of the Queen, matey boy, so you're going to have to wait. And thus they're made to wait. Harry's wife is second best. So there is challenge, by way of challenge fuel from Charles, wounding from the other four members of the entourage and then it happens again as they are held up and then they're allowed to go now in that instance as i've explained there will be the challenge through the repeated wounding that has occurred and harry's wife's fury will have ignited we don't actually get to see it because the facade holds on this occasion but she doesn't have control and shortly thereafter, she would have needed to assert control. She would not have done it directly. She wouldn't have been able to do anything towards the Queen and Prince Charles, etc. And instead, she will have probably blamed Harry, either complaining about the fact we should have been invited, and in essence, smearing the other members of the royal family. And of course, the Ginger Prince would just be nodding. Yes, yes, we should have done. You're absolutely right, my sweet. I know they should have included us. I don't know why they didn't. It's this awful racist imperialist family of mine. I don't even know why I bother with them anymore. You're absolutely right. Your most uh, gracious empress of all things woke, tugging his forelock, etc. Or she will have rounded on Harry, blaming him in some way in terms of, you fucked up the invitation again and look at the state of that £50 note. A child could do better than that. And therefore, she scolds him and he is contrite and, of course, in the sustained devaluation, is just trying to appease her, bending over backwards to accommodate these reprimands, which gives her an unconscious sense of control. Or the alternative is, if she wasn't able to do that shortly thereafter, she would have had to have remained in a position of withdrawal, her narcissism causing her to think dark thoughts, look at them, thinking they're better than me. Who do they think they are making me stop? Me, empress of all things woke, queen of bananatarians, halting me from walking where I want to go. Stupid family, stupid conventions, idiotic rules. The sooner I'm out of here, the better. And it will have caused her to think those thoughts, thus undermining her own perceived sense of superiority and allowing the unconscious assertion of control. So an excellent example of challenge through both wounding and challenge fuel, and thereafter a further dose of wounding and the response, as I've explained, either an indirect assertion of control to Harry by smearing those other members of the family, or with no due regard for how that makes Harry feel, talking ill about his family members, and he just has to go along with it. Otherwise, if he fights back, she'll give him a further devaluate, devaluing behaviours.
Then, thereafter, we have the further wounding and, of course, she may well have asserted control by staying in a position of withdrawal.